Now I'd like to revisit this uh, question of components in an architecture, in an execution architecture, just for a little while. Um, because um, talking about components as if they already existed is not quite true. Part of the, the um, uh, job of, of uh, designing an execution architecture is to try and determine which, which of the, the objects can be aggregated into a component and which have to remain separate. So we do want uh, to aggregate where it makes sense and not aggregate where it doesn't. So identifying concurrent components, we first discover where concurrency may be required without regard to whether it should be a system, subsystem, a process, or a thread. So we want to know when uh, things have to be executing at the same time. Okay, so um, sometimes that's, re that's required. Now, probably the best example is um, anything that has to monitor the system or anything that has to monitor would probably be a separate component. Um, uh, usually services are a pretty good candidate to be a separate, so separate component as well. So mostly concerned for real-time systems. Uh, real-time systems you may have um, uh, decided reasons why you need to have uh, separate components. We try to establish what needs to be happening at the same time and we can also have a look at the quality attributes. So components with high reliability or high criticality needs should not be mixed with components that don't have those same needs. Um, this seems to be uh, something of good heuristic knowledge. The real-time responsibility should not be mixed with non-real-time responsibilities, um, which kind of makes a bit of sense as well, uh, because if you've got the non-real, it's, it's not that the real-time couldn't cope with the non-real-time, it's the other way around. If you had some non-real-time requirement uh, and you were trying to implement it in a component and it decided to sit around and wait for a little while, the real-time parts would get pretty upset. There are practical constraints too. The need for separate development or testing can indicate the need for separate components. Now this is probably becoming a bit more important and we'll get to that again in a minute. Now what indicates the needs for concurrent activity? When you're looking at an architecture, what kind of thing would be um, flags to say, you know, maybe this ought to be a, a um, concurrent activity? Well, if you've got a use case map and it's got a fork in it, it's quite likely that, that fork indicates that the two bits, the, the ends of the forks, should be um, separate activities and concurrent activities. Components that perform significant amount of work uh, may need to scale these up through additional servers or processes. Uh, components have to wait for real world inputs. Um, you probably might make those a separate uh, component. And components which are known to require separate hardware. Um, so components such as um, specific device interfaces, they may well be a separate uh, component. The example we've got here is that we have a model car controller. So we've got a car and we've got the controller and there's uh, some sort of wireless communication between them. Now clearly the processes on the car are going to be a separate um, subsystem, a separate process from the components on the controller. However, on the controller, um, we have a, a user interface, we have a status monitor, and we have car communications. Now, these may well have to be separate components on the controller, never mind the fact the car is separate as well. And uh, the person who designed this one decided to use threads for all concurrent components. Mm, not sure it's necessary. Another example is uh, architecture of a digital audio system. Here we have the uh, library, we have the uh, console, and we have the playback unit. Um, now clearly the audio capture and playback unit would be running uh, on its own clock, on its own process. The library is a service. It gets called, it provides an answer to that call, uh, usually to say get me this or put that somewhere. Um, and then the, the, there is no need for it to stay awake. The controller, on the other hand, um, may need to take input from the playback unit or input from the, the library, but it could get interrupted. It also needs to pay attention to the user, so there's, there's a need for the playback for the controller to be a separate uh, component. Now, 
having concurrent components or separate components is starting to become a bit more important when you're talking at the uh, non-functional requirements. Now one that's becoming particularly uh, important I guess is scalability where organizations are shifting their operations from, from being contained within the, the organization to being hosted by the organization and will, facing the world. Uh, so you, you've got an outward facing uh, system that um, now the uh, demand for use of it is not constrained by the number of employees but by the number of customers and that that could vary significantly so you may may really well have significant scalability requirements um, the architecture that is um, uh, being used to answer this is largely some sort of a service oriented architecture or more recently a microservices architecture um, and that uh, is there simply to enable a great deal of horizontal scaling uh, you could get a security subsystem as usually a candidate for independent component as well. Um, and modification and maintenance requirements. Um, these are starting to become important in terms of, well now you've got the system going, you've got a whole lot of different functions that are provided in it. Um, how are you going to maintain these? How are you going to roll them out? And a number of people have come to the conclusion that tried to roll them out in, in one great lump. Um, as one component just isn't working. It, it, it just takes too much to get this thing deployed. So what they're doing is they're breaking the system down into separate uh, components, each of which can be deployed independently and which are largely independent from each other's. So again, we're getting back to this microservices architecture where you've got um, uh, components being installed and uploaded and, and uh, initiated um, quite frequently and quite, um, quite independently. So this, um, there's this convergence toward a microservices architecture. Now there are some reasons why you would not create components. Uh, performance liabilities, now context switching between concurrent activities is, is more expensive than a function call. We've already covered that. Uh, but calls between entirely, you know, calls across the communication network are slower again. Um, reliability and maintainability concerns generally dictate that concurrency should not be used indiscriminately. Um, where possible, concurrency should be encapsulated into components with carefully specified usage policies. Concurrency sounds fabulous, um, but if it is a um, if it involves a great deal of synchronization, then that synchronization is not something that most people can do uh, terribly easily and it is kind of error prone and a bit difficult. So in summary, the conceptual architecture shows what the system, um, what the system can do and which part of the system does it. Yeah? But it's absent any, um, um, any reality, any, any uh, constraints imposed by the fact that it's a computer system. The execution architecture captures the dynamics of the system um, in terms of how the system behaves, how it's controlled, and how information moves about the system. And the execution architecture allows you to reason about dynamic behavior.